Hello everyone, and welcome back to another Heartwell Death Stream, the live stream series where I continue to develop this adorable Souls Light action RPG with platform mechanics and a branching narrative. If you find these death streams interesting or helpful, be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel and boop that bell button to stay notified. So, uh, for the most part, uh, we're going to be picking up where we left off uh, last death stream, so if I can pull up my notes here. We have a bunch of areas to double check and make some adjustments for, for uh, wooden cabinet sound effects. Well, not wooden cabinet, just wooden footsteps, sound effects, or I should say footsteps on wooden surfaces. And from there, we'll be continuing with some more sound design. However, I would like to make a note about uh, tonight's step stream is um, tonight's step stream and or the next step stream are a little special in that they are the last dev streams that I'll be doing uh, to set up the demo of the game. So wh what I mean by that is there's obviously going to be plenty more Hartwell dev streams uh, long after uh, this stream and, and next week's stream. However, I am quite close to uh, finishing in the, the demo itself. So dev streams after, I'd say, after next week at the late, after, not next week, after next dev stream at the latest, are actually going to be working on stuff that will be beat, you know, that would occur after the demo. So I'm very excited to be heading in that direction. But for now, we ha definitely have some uh, sound effects to get back to it. So, without further ado, I uh, also need to log into Pretzel Routes. Give me one second. Hello, Copper Nicholson. Thanks for dropping by. How's it going? Welcome, welcome. Just set that on up. All righty. Let's head on back to it. So. Did make a list last time of areas that needed some adjustments. So first, on top of a tall uh, cabinet in the leftmost room, uh, filled with tons of rattlesnakes and wonder brattle. So I know which cabinet that is. I believe it's going to be going to our little map here. this over here not quite sure what you're posting there copper nicholson but yeah so i believe it's that cabinet right there let's head on into our code and make some adjustments But why, Copper Nicholson? What was the significance of that string of characters? Okay, here we go. This is the area we're looking for. So I believe, is this the first zone we programmed? Let's find out. Aha, it is. So according to our notes, we need to move this, uh, the left edge, uh, four pixels to the right, and the right edge, one pixel uh, to the right. So we'll make that adjustment there. So hopefully that'll make it so the one sound effects uh, plays when it looks like when Dorothy's Moore standing over the wooden cabinet here. Oh, interesting, I was unaware of that, Copper Nicholson. Kind of makes me think of how uh, in Xenoblade Chronicles 2, there was like that one line that said, there was like that one line that all the soldiers had that was just constantly repeated over and over again due to a glitch and it became a massive meme. I think it goes like, think you can take me and like, don't forget me. And it's like, it was just constantly said over and over and over again because of that, um, basically, bud, it became a meme.
All right. And to now the thing about these lines, chat, is whenever I adjust the line of code uh, in a region here, it's not as simple as just adjusting one line of code and we're done because besides identifying a region for a sound effects area to play, we also have to identify the region for the sound effects area to be reset. In other words, the, the areas outside of it. So basically it's just the negative of this. So as a result, we need to find the line in uh, this area down here and adjust it. So found the line right there. We'll adjust that right there. Now for this, now I will be testing this area out here, even though, well actually I guess it'd be more efficient to do multiple uh, sections at once before we go into testing mode. So we just did this line. Now we'll work on this one. Add another region to the top right edge, just past the metal pipe. And the reason for that it says, as it currently stands, this region by itself, while generally aligned, isn't enough to cover the spot up here. It'll sound like you're walking on uh, stone if you are walk, walk to this corner up here. Because of that, we need to just make a tiny little rectangle at the edge here. So to accomplish that, we'll do a copy pasta. Move the Z coordinate up, but this way, way, way over here. And judging by our map, um, our tile map editor over here, that has to be towards the edge there. So I think I want it to be about there conceivably. We'll probably have to make some fine adjustments, but that's all right. And this line goes past the 1884 line, right down there. So that's zero. And go on from there. All right. Now, while this is, uh, now what I'm while what I'm doing uh, for a sanity sound effect regions is uh, on the more mundane side. Keep in mind, chat, that this is like one of the finishing touches uh, before the the demo is in its uh, before the demo is in a finished state. Which is, I mean, the mere fact that I'm you know we're we're literally within weeks of the demo being unavailable to be play tested is a big accomplishment. Just been working at. Uh, We've been working on this for years. I'm very excited for it. Very, very excited. So let's power through these uh, last uh, couple of sections and finish strong. Okay, so three long vertical wooden platforms with mats on. Okay, I know all three platforms need the right edge. Move one pixel to the right. And the small middle platform needs the left edge move one pixel to the right. All right. So I believe that's down here. I'll make those adjustments. Or not. Is it a different area? Oh, you know, I, I know what the problem is. I'm looking in the wrong spot. That's a one, which would be for metal. We should be looking here. There it is. All right, so according to our notes. Move the right edge one pixel to the right. So that edge right there needs moved one to the right. I see you need level the left and right edge here moved to one to the right, so 1945, 
Does this mean you'll finally have time to play this again? Are you planning to watch the Ruby movie together when it comes out? Uh, I have, again, not sure Copper Nicholson, so... When, um, first of all, the demo's actual full release is dependent on a Steam review process that's, again, something I have no control over. Besides, you know, do, you know, do, 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 doing my best and setting up a Steam page and then submitting it. So essentially, what, what I'm getting at Copper Nicholson is even when the demo application itself is fully tested and I have uh and it's in an actual playable state there's still the process to set up the steam page and and release uh, release the steam page and release the steam page isn't as simple okay i press the submit button it's live it's okay i press the submit button now it goes post a valve for a review and then they can choose to either publish it or to request me to make some fixes so the short answer is I don't have an exact date when and the demo will be released by, because there is some uncertainty around that. I just know it's going to be probably in the in, in the coming weeks because I I am genuinely that close. That's that's really really exciting. Right, one to the right. So when, out of curiosity, Topper Nicholson, when does that uh, new movie come out? Because I, I, I don't know, I haven't really been keeping up. Okay, so we adjusted these lines. Starting with the 20, 2010, there we go. Now we make the same adjustments down here. Same. Uh, adjustments over here. All right. So, with all those adjustments made there, that's this section right for testing. That's one wooden stalls in the shower room, all wooden areas and horizontal metal area. Move the right edge one pixel to the right. Okay. So, first, try to find the shower area. We'll actually go to this screen here so we can see. You'll notice in the bottom. Uh, this one right here actually displays the X Y coordinates of the mouse indicator. So we're looking for something in the 1500 uh, X range and the 1700 Y range. So, where is it? Okay, this one's probably it. Okay, so is that the... The horizontal metal area, actually. So it's not this one, because that right edge can't possibly be off. It's in this general area. Ah, here we go. Found it. Let's make some adjustments. Turn that to 1575. Now I'll go back up for the wooden areas to make those adjustments. Okay. 
October 17th. I see Dr. Mickelson. Well, I, I don't think the demo is going to be, you know, publicly available by then. I like to do this with Copper Nicholson. If the demo were fully ready right now, and I put, and I tried to make the Steam page, it would, I'd still be subject to that, you know, up to two week review period. So we'll leave that at that, Copper Nicholson. I pre again, appreciate the invite, but I think I'll, I think I'll probably be busy. Where was I? So these areas right here. Yep. Yeah. Alright, we made those adjustments. Adjustments have been made. Now with that all there, move our attention to the right path. So the four wooden shelves above the pantry. Let's make sure we're looking in the right area. I believe it's this spot right here. Okay. Left edge, four pixels to the right. This one's the one one tab in the pantry, which I think is this one. Yep. The left edge, one pixel to the left. This section, we're in the one by one stall in the top right corner. Move the right edge one pixel to the right. All right. So we're there. We're down there. We're down there. Hmm. 
Why don't we change the subjects? Oh, by the way, uh, Trevor Nicholson, I've, I've, saw, I've seen you made some posts about like your um, the distance you've been running, you know, on the on the treadmill in recent weeks. Have you? Uh, uh, well, uh, how have your runs been going? Have you have you broken any any records yet uh, recently? Whether for distance or or speed or anything like that. Take a look at our map here. So we need this one area and this one area to move slightly. I'm sorry to hear you're having uh, uh, some problems, but I'm glad to hear that you're uh, make, you know that you're enjoying the treadmill cardio and that's helping. And that's awesome, dude. I wish you all the best with your run. Fun facts, chat. Um, there have been times in the in recent weeks where I've been going to the gym to use one of their bicycles and. One of the nice things. All right, well, that's good. That, it's good to hear that's going in the right direction then. Um, but one of the nice things about uh, by, about cycling is that it is possible to actually, like one of those like kind, kinds of cycles you, you sit on at like a gym and you're just, you know, pedaling in place. One of the nice things about that is Especially the ones that have like a, a seat with a back to it. You can actually just pull out your phone and type notes on it. And I sometimes use that as a very productive time to write some lore for Hartwell. <laughs> I also tend to do something similar when I'm in, um, when I'm just lifting weights in between sets. I'll, you know, sit down and maybe write a little bit of, bit of lore for Hartwell or an idea and then go do my next set. It's, I find it's a fun use of time. And plus, you know, for those of you who who do enjoy going to the gym and are also developers, again, would highly recommend at least trying, you know, writing notes in between sets because when you're when you're working out or when you're essentially burning calories or putting your body through physical effort, it gets the blood flowing everywhere, including in the brain. And that can definitely like some of my best ideas have come while I've been uh you know, either during or immediately after a good workout. And it doesn't even have to just be for game development either, if it's anything. So, if they've got anything related to, like if you're doing any writing or whether it's creative writing or something like that, or even, I mean, even when I was back in college, the same idea where it's like if you got homework, making good use of like your, your downtime during um, a, a visit to the gym can be um, a great way to produce pro productivity. I will make that adjustment there. That adjustment over there. All righty.
So, right now, chat, I'm just, like I said, going through these areas, trying to adjust the zones where the sound effects will play. We'll be testing them out momentarily. What are you interested in betting on, Copper Nicholson? Is there like a, a, a Transformers figure you're looking for? Because oh, I'm, I have to imagine there must be some really old rare ones out there. Ultra Madness? I am not. What's that, Autobot Commander, Copper Nicholson? All right. So we've done all these specific areas. Now, chat, it's time to test the map. to do chat is do a little, little run through to see the various area is with wooden sections now right now i'm walking at the very edge here not hearing any sound effects so that's actually a good thing that's a good thing we don't want to hear a wooden sound effects quite there very good all right now this area can be a little bit trickier so i think we'll actually uh, clear this area out. Okay, that was a horrible idea. For those who are wondering how I'm using a, a rock that does 112 damage, I mean, well, there you go. Well, this plus the absurd amount of dexterity I've invested for testing purposes. I did, like, this, these, these kinds of levels are not something I would expect to see in the demo just because th this would be complete overkill for anything in the tutorial dungeon. But because I've been testing uh, the boss battles in um, the demo quite a bit, it's led to me having pretty ridiculous stats like this, where I just literally one shine things left and right, even with like the the starting range weapon. He's basically uh, sent in command to the Alabama military. It's like Tenya Ida from My Hero Academia. Oh, okay, that that that's actually a, a good reference point, Pepper. Uh, okay, uh, there's a massive uh, figure of him for thirty bucks. Interesting. I see. All right. Well, well good luck with that, Topper. And for those who are wondering, yes, there is a lore bit there. It is in the middle of the snack room. For those who want to read the lore bits, have fun. <laughs> for us to do our testing. All right. So right now I'm not, I'm not physically touching the wooden area. That's it. Perfect. Okay, that one's done. So we'll cross that one off the, off the checklist. else do we even just put done as few would say done okay all right next so what we're interested in chat is oh interesting <laughs> there's perhaps a one or two pixel gap where the wood isn't playing. Hmm. All right. I'll have to make an adjustment there. 
adjust the left edge of the new region to be in line with the right edge of the metal region. Currently, there's a DAP that lets the default sound the fifth play. All right. Otherwise, the outside sounds good. So that's some progress right there. Now let's move on over this way. And hop. All right, very good. Move on over that way. So the next area was this room over here, so we'll just hoppy hop over there. Perfect. So, we need to clear the spot out. Perfect. For those who are wondering how I didn't get hit there, it's because I dropped down in elevation, so I was below the projectile. So what we were testing, we had to move the right edge one pixel to the right. I have no idea how anything saw me there, but okay. So right now, I'm walking along the the edge just to make sure we're not hearing the one sound fit. So far, so good. Okay, doke. So basically, chat, what I'm going to do is try to edge myself out to like the very edge of this platform and see whether or not we can get a standard sound effect. So far, it's wood, so that's good. So we have some things that we'll put there. Okay, I think this one's good. So we also need to move. Left edge one pixel to the right. Huh. Move the left edge one pixel to the right. Yep. So for those who might be just joining the stream, right now, chat, I am testing out sound effect zones. In this case, these elevated platforms to make sure it sounds like one's walking on some kind of wood. All right, that's correct. Very good. test out this area to move on to the next one. As we continue making good progress on this front. Not bad. Well, glad to hear it, Copper Nicholson. Now, as someone who doesn't really... I mean, I can't remember using eBay since, you know, I don't think... Either I've never used eBay, or if I ever did use eBay, it was when I was much, 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 much younger. Uh, are are there like any strategies uh, you employ, Copper Nicholson, when you're bidding? Like, do you wait till like the very last second, or do you try to essentially set a bid earlier on? For those who are wondering why I keep falling off this platform, is I'm trying to get to it till Dorothy is literally only standing on one pixel on like the very edge of this platform, seeing what sound effects plays. So far, it's almost there. It's like to edge out even further is like very, very hard, especially with a, a keyboard. I think that's probably as good as we're going to get, though. 
All right, that sounds correct. Because we haven't fallen off yet. So I think this one's actually all good. That's the area we'll go to. There's one stalls in the, sh in, in, the um, in the shower room. Oh no, I fell off. No, I don't. No problem though, we'll just do some, some jumping and we'll be over there soon enough. You have to wait until the last second, that way you can ensure that no one can beat your price, but others have the same idea, fair enough. Hey Jay, thanks for dropping by, how's it going? How hard would it be to add shadows to the lower level when on the edge of a platform? Uh, pretty, uh, pretty difficult, Jay. And what I mean by that is, you have to understand how Hartwell isn't truly a 3D game. I mean, I say that's knowing full well there's a Z coordinate, so there are some 3D elements, like elevation. So for example, I throw a rock here, it goes all the way to the edge there because of the elevation, whereas if I'm down here, you know, at a lower elevation, it's, um, oh, whoops. You know, it's wall. But, at the same time, there's no actual, like, run behind things. So for example, you know, even though this looks like an isometric object, I can't, like, walk behind it. So because of that, when I'm staying at, like, the very edge of a platform, there is, there really wouldn't be any benefits having a drop shadow, if you will, below Dorothy, because where the player would end up if they walked off the platform is actually, you know, about right here where Dorothy is, not like down here. So, granted, you know, much earlier in developments, Dorothy didn't even have, like, a drop shadow at all. So the drop shadow helps people platform during the animation, as you can see. So that way people can know exactly where they're going to land. And additionally, um, another idea, this is courtesy of Breckborer, by the way. When Dorothy lands, there's now little bits of, pit, uh, you know, little particles that go around to indicate that she's fallen. And that was, as it was all the falling sound effects, so if I'm quiet here, in addition to the particles, there's also a little thump whenever Dorothy lands. And because of that, that gives a way for a player to know if they've lost elevation. So, for example, because it can be quite hard to tell, just visually, like, okay, am I on the platform? Am I not? Well, I'm still on the platform, I'm still making the sound effects, Dorothy can still walk around, but then, I fall down, suddenly, you know, you see the fart effect, you hear the thump, and that's the indicator that the player has fallen down. Does that make sense, Jay? Yep. I mean, the only way I could ever see myself programming some kind of drop shower for simply being over an edge of something would be if this was a truly 3D isometric game, but it's not. So, while it does have three elements, it doesn't... Uh, you assume moving to higher or lower elevations would move slightly north or south. Well, uh, with the way the game's uh, programmed, not quite. It's more what you see is what you get. That's why I'm saying it's not true 3D, even though there is height to consider. So, I'm just going to take care of that rattle for a second. The thing about this is this is actually kind of a difficult shot to line up. There we go. So, like, what you see is what you get. So if I were, like, to walk off this platform, I didn't, like, fall... You know, I followed vertically in the Z direction, but like, if you mean like visually, like we say this is the XY plane, I haven't moved down in the Y direction. The only reason you moved down if you were to say walk off this path, it says this is a wall, so it's kind of like a slope. So it like throws you down, kind of like a slope in wood and Pokemon. But it's not like I can walk behind anything here. All right. So yeah. It's one of those little intricacies and nuances that makes Hartwell a bit different. If it was a true 3D game, it would definitely be a lot even more complicated to program than it already is. So this is kind of the, ha the happy medium that I've come to over the course of uh, developing this. There we go. Alright, now to test what we came here for. So when we last tested this chat, if we were to edge ourselves out completely, we actually would hear uh, the stone sound effect like this. A 
Okay, so we are definitely at the very edge. As you can see, like Dorothy, it's literally Dorothy's dress is hanging on like the very edge of this platform and we're still up here. That sounds like wood, good. Okay, so I think we got that all fixed. Oh, good. Okay, next spot to check. Four wooden shells in the pantry, so we're going to the kitchen chat. All right, this might be a bit of a weird question, chat. What is like your favorite non-perishable snack? What I mean by that is it's a snack that you can essentially, with, without refrigeration, you can essentially put it into like a wooden cabinet in your pantry and just leave it there for as long as you want and enjoy it every once in a while. So for me, if I had to have just one, all right, peanuts and other types of nuts. All right, that, that those are good, those are good. Yeah, for, let's see, for me, I'm trying to think. And then this would be more of like a delicacy kind of thing, but like, I think they're called like wafers or something. They're like these, they're like these little vanilla cookies that are, are fun to have every once in a while. But if I want a more healthy snack on more realist, uh, on more recurring time, it would definitely be trail mix. So like a mix of raisins and, and various types of nuts. Those are very, very good as a general snack. Yes, all right, I see. So you see we all enjoy um, having various types of like peanuts, trail mix, stuff like that. True, okay, that's a fair point. So I guess the vanilla wafer cookies would be more of like a once in a while thing, whereas the snack I would just randomly have would definitely be trail mix. Though I will say up there is also some form of cheese it or equivalent kind of, of salty, um, salty, slightly cheesy cracker. Anyway, so you might be asking, Antonitz, why are you asking this random question about pantries? Because again, we are going to the pantry area. So that's over here. So we have a nice happy little pantry near a happy little kitchen with all the happy little snakes. Okay, and the spot we're testing chat is if you're paying very close attention to Dorothy's feet as she's walking against this wall here, we're trying to make sure it sounds uh, the correct sound effect. So right now it should be sounding like, like the default, so stone, which it does. Now if I move my self ever so slightly to the right. I think we might want to make a slight adjustment there. Maybe one or two pixels to the left. Yeah, I think what we can do is maybe the left edge two pixels to the left should solve it. Question, salt or unsalted peanuts? Great, que uh, great question, Jay. I would definitely say unsalted. Because personally, I think the thing about, the thing that's nice about nuts is being able to have like a lot of them to get a, you know, a fair amount of protein while, without, um, without actually having to like uh, cook meat of some kind. And it's like it's meant to be a snack. But if you just have salted, like any kind of nut, the problem is like you get you eat too much nuts suddenly your salt is um your salt levels have have, have gotten messed up now so personally i like it better to have unsalted and nuts when possible uh, what about you jay it's not that like having salted nuts is a deal breaker it's just i most certainly prefer to have them um, unsalted oh this one still needs adjustments how much though? Okay, it needs one pixel to the left. All right, so it still needs to be moved one pixel to the left. Okay, the next one to check are the various stalls. So we'll take a look at those. Uh, now, the cobra's coming! And the cobra's gone. Okay. Now I'll just 
just boop. Not sure what happened to the sound effect there, but okay. Let's all get back to them. Uh, you know, that's also a good point. Yeah, especially if you buy it in bulk, you can certainly get a lot of nuts or or other types of food as well. I mean, literally, chat. I remember that this is more about potatoes, but it had been a while since I actually had lights baked potatoes. And I was looking in the store aisle one day. And I'm like, okay, I'm curious. If I bought these potatoes in bulk from a reasonably priced store, just how many could I get? I think there was like a 10 pound bag of potatoes or something. It was left for like maybe five or six bucks. And I was like, whoa, that's a good deal. <laughs> so, so I ended up uh, buying, you know, this big multi-pound bag of potatoes. And it's it's been nice. It's, it's been nice to be like, okay, I want some baked potatoes. I'll just go grab some. I'll, I'll scrub them off. I'll, I'll make them. In fact, sometimes, chat, when I'm feeling like I've, when I'm having a craving for like perhaps some kind of unhealthy uh, fast food like wings or something, I I might, you know, I might order takeout, but only the wings themselves as opposed to the combo that comes with french fries and instead make my own baked potatoes. It ends up being a nice balance because it's like on the one hand, I have my very fatty, very um, unhealthy wings. But on the other hand, I have my very healthy baked potato, and the mitts is, is uh, quite nice. Now, I don't. So there are snacks down there, but we need to test these things, so. Wow, it must have fallen so fast, I didn't notice. Is a thing where you are, or is it just Australian? I've never heard of that, Jay. What is, what is Spud Shed? Is that like a brand of potato? Uh oh. I think we ever did it. Okay, so that needs. So that needs to move one pixel to the left. That sells basically any food and drink you could uh, want in so many bulk. Huh. Nope, never heard of it. Okay, this, so those areas need adjusted. But we are day in there, chat. At least we're day in there. But yeah, I was definitely, I, I'm definitely a big proponent of like ordering uh, non-perishable food in bulk in order to, you know, save in the long run. It's the same sort of thing with like cereal. Like if there's a good deal to get like a, a bulk amount of cereal, you know, most cereals are non-perishable and you can, you know, you can leave them for months or even years and they'll be fine. So it's nice to be able to buy those in bulk in order to try and uh, get ahead of inflation where one can.
Right, so back to making some minor adjustments. Alright, so this might be a silly question, Jay. Do you know what a Wawa is? Have you even heard of a Wawa? No, not that top, Rachelson. <laughs> Never heard of it? Okay, and that's, you know, perfectly fair enough because a Wawa is like a convenience store chain that is uh, very, very, very popular in northeastern, uh, in the northeastern United States. It basically doesn't exist anywhere else. But the main, uh, th the main um, things to get at Wawa are it doubles as a gas station. It's, you get like a bunch of different donuts or sodas there. But you can also, more uh, for, for most people, the big draw is Hody Fest. So basically, uh, like uh, cold cut sandwiches. Uh, there's, I think it's during the summer, uh, Hody Fest comes. They get like these massive cold cut sandwiches, uh, fairly inexpensively. Uh, are there any, like, I guess, convenience store chains that you like to go to, Jay? Because at least uh, where around I am, Wawa is, is pretty popular. Or at least I should say where I grew up, since I haven't really seen a Wawa where I am now, but where I grew up, it was very, very popular. All right, chat, so for this one right here, where we're just a couple of pixels off, I think the smart thing to do, let me see, it's 1031, is actually to find the metal section and find what the right edge coordinate is so we know which one to go for. I know it's in the 2000s. It'll be somewhere around here, I think. Well, I'm on the right track. Hmm. Where, oh, where could it be? Can we look for coordinates in the thousands? So, where you live, there is IGA and Woolies, and that's it. All right. Do you prefer one over the other, or are they about the same? Because I remember at least where I grew up, while various convenience store chains come and went, while I was kind of always there. It always kind of retained uh, some amount of popularity even as things changed. Aha, there it is. Okay, so the horizontal is 2102. So with that in mind, we'll go down here. Ah, here, therein lies the problem. So this, yeah, quite literally was two pixels wide. But with that one tiny adjustment, should be all good. You're yeah, probably because 
IGA is run by IC. Okay. That's the, the four wooden shells in the pantry. Move the left edge two pixels to the left. To this area to make some more adjustments. Sixty-seven to thirty-one sixty-five. That adjustment is completed. That's uh, the one below it. It says move the left edge one pixel to the left. So the next one, let's move this area over here. The wooden stalls need uh, their zones adjusted. Yeah, so that should be 67. Adjustments. Hmm. All good. That's the uh, stalls in the second bathroom. Same thing. Adjustment up here as well. All right, now for another run through chat. Let's see if we finally have it all lined up. Another run through the Hall of Snacks. So for us, our area of interest is over there.
All right, and then we die. So that one's dead. A few more tests, and then we'll move on to program some more areas. Those ones down there, which were, I think the wooden beds especially, and the barracks will be a bit more complicated as more winding paths. Well, now all the snacks have been respawned. Whoops. <laughs> Silly me. That means we get to fight them again. So we get to experience it all over again. It'll be like, like opening you know, a book we enjoy probably another time. That's alright. The snacks were just saying hello. And they made their point. So the next spot we need to check is... The pantry, once again. So back over to the pantry we go. Alright. Alright. I think we got it. So that one's done, though. Next. All right, I think that one's good too. Shut the stalls. Ow. ourselves at the very edge of these upper platforms. Oh, there we go. That's the very edge. Alright. That section's done. And finally, I forgot to jump. <laughs> Whoops. Too. So that's progress chat. We're like, I'd say 80% done with the wooden uh, spots in this uh, in this level. The only spots that remain are right here. And then we'll move on to dirt footstep sound effects. So but I think we'll do that after a short break. So don't darn guys, I will be right back.
Alrighty, uh, welcome back everybody. So we got that, uh, those areas programs and previously, and now we're going to try and finish up programming the wooden areas. And we'll be saying, well, what's the last area in Thomas? Here. This spot right here has lots going on. <laughs> And that has to do with the fact that there are so many winding paths. So we'll be here for a bit. <laughs> First thing we'll do is line up our camera. So we can see a bit more effectively. Then we'll go over here. Begin making our adjustments. Well, I guess our copy pastas as we'll call them. Why I call it a copy pasta? Because we copy and paste a lot of the code and then make slight adjustments as we need. This one up here. Let's see. So one of the good things. Oh, nice. Good job, Copper Nicholson. Glad he had a good run on the treadmill. First thing we do is line this up. Fortunately, we do have a bit of space to work with here, so that's good. We also benefit that we don't have any overhanging ledges in a horizontal direction that are of different material, so that's also a big upside. So we start there, move it 6 pixels to the left. Alright, and we'll use that one as our base model. Only a bunch of these, because I guarantee we are going to have a lot of areas due to the winding nature of the paths here. Perhaps around there should be fine. We move the thirsty pixels to the left, or sorry, not to the left, to the right. Stuff. This one move all the way down here. That should be fine. Hopefully. So we slowly make our way over. So we have to move to see the right sixty four. That's such what I should do. But yeah, all in all, chat, the mere fact that we're this close, we're getting so close to the downers release, that's me excited because 
basically once the stuff that will be in the demo is all put together these dev streams are going to become you're going to get to see a, uh, probably a lot more of the game because a, there's a massive massive chunk of tile sets level design boss design and enemy design that will be necessary for the full game that goes well beyond what we've seen in this tutorial dungeon. I've, I've definitely tried my best to keep uh, the story of, of Hartwell and uh, the um, like the boss battles and stuff like that under wraps for a while now. But like once the demo's out, there's a bunch of stuff I'd be more happy to show on dev streams. I basically would be following kind of what I'll call the crosscode rule. So uh, the, the developers of crosscode also did dev streams. And while they liked to share a lot of what they were doing, they were very cautious about trying to maintain the integrity of the story they were trying to tell. So essentially what they did is they made a sequence of dev streams for various portions of their game, various chapters and such, up to a certain point in the story. And after that point in the story, basically all that stuff was done offline so that players wouldn't be spoiled on, you know, where the story was going or some of the, the later dungeons. Or things to that effect. But all in all, it gets me excited to think about uh, basically that next step. All right. I have made a mistake. Damn. All right, there we go. That should suffice. Da, 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 da. Uh, 32 to the left, so that'll be 22. And 66. There we go. Alright, so based off of what is left, I think four more regions should suffice. Three more reaches to go. There we go. Making progress. One, two, three. Well, actually, 
Yeah, we can eyeball that. That should suffice. Alright, we need to move that to, to the right, so add 64 to that. That becomes 41, 34. Actually, no, we need that much further out like that. All right, and last but certainly not least. Okie doke. Now we need to copy these new sections to the lower port. Do I have any Halloween music? Um, not the moment, Top Nicholson. No, you are right. It is the it is October, so it is the it is definitely uh it is definitely spoopy season. I love spoopy. Speaking of music though, chat, it's our jam. Our jam has arrived. Da, 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 da. I'm curious, what is the song called again? Uh, Erosion by Drummer Boy. That's our jam, chat. Hmm, no thanks, Chopper Nicholson. If, if you want to listen to that, you're always welcome to go to YouTube. Alright. We start with this one. Move it down here. Yeah. Uh, I think I've gone over it before, Copper Nicholson, but I like this music because it has this kind of calm rising sensation to it, like sunlight coming over. A, a, a nice calm day in in the morning. Makes me think of uh, Final Ninja Zero as well, of uh, one of my favorite Flash games. Da -da. Mm -hmm. And since you know this is a dev stream, Copper Nickel, so it's all about creation. So for me, this is like. A great kind of music to listen to. In fact, when I um, when I'm developing, and I want something to listen to, I often find myself listening to either either video game OSTs. Like I mean, when I say OSTs, I mean like full OSTs, so I can just play it in the background and be listening to like a soundtrack. Uh, Sonic Heroes, for example, uh, has a, a really fun soundtrack to listen to just overall because there's so much variety between rock and roll and orchestral, but. Outside of that, I really like to listen to a variety of, of jazz pieces. So, if any of you are familiar with the the, the famous jazz guitarist Pat Ma Pat Metheny, for example, well, I think um, I think uh, his album "The Way Up" as well uh, is a great is a great one to listen to if you're just going to be doing a lot of code for hours, or even. Or even when, um, let's see. or even when you're just doing other kinds of words, it's just a nice uh, soundtrack to listen to, or not soundtrack, uh, nice music to, to listen to. I also like um, what's another good one? Pat Metheny's "The Road to Use" a really, really good album. Well, everyone has different preferences, Copper Nicholson. My preferences are definitely more atmospheric. I think that comes down to me enjoying like the music that's tied to various grandiose uh, levels, especially in like the Sonic the Headshot series and 
um, games of old. Okay, almost there. I want to make sure I have this count correctly. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. So let's set it all up. there it's time to go full developer mode full developer mode let's go keep moving forward keep moving forward keep moving forward Sonic, Ruby, Hollow Knight, and Castlevania are your go-to OSTs hey those are all great choices very very great choices So, like, the thing about Sonic especially is, while the games are all over the place in terms of quality, like, the, you'd be very, very hard-pressed to find a Sonic game with bad music. Like, I mean, actually, that's a fascinating question, isn't it? Like, is there a Sonic game with bad music? Like, I have a hard time trying to contemplate that, because it's like, to me, even the worst Sonic games have, have great soundtracks. Like, like Sonic R, for example, like Sonic R, I consider one of the worst Sonic games ever made. It's just, there's very, 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 very little that's redeeming about it. And it's very buddy and horribly balanced. But, at the same time, you know, some of its race strategies, it's actually pretty good. <laughs> now, with that being said... Time to do some testing. Now, you might be saying, of all the Sonic games, why do I listen to Sonic Heroes when I'm developing? So, Sonic Heroes is a mess. I will be the first to admit that, it, by all accounts, it is not the best 3D Sonic game. In fact, I would not even put it in my top three in terms of 3D Sonic games. However, it still does hold a special place in my heart. For one thing, when I was growing up, I didn't really get the chance to play that many 3D Sonic games, just because the Sonic Adventure 1, 2, things like that were kind of, I don't think there were any PC ports of that until many, many years later. Whereas Sonic Heroes actually did have a PC port when I was growing up. And because we didn't have like any gaming console, well, like the GameCube or anything like that, we were basically default. Uh, default, uh, we basically didn't really get the chance to experience 3D Sonic until a game like Sonic Heroes. So as a result of that, I, myself and my brothers actually played a lot of Sonic Heroes when we were growing up, and we, you know, we enjoyed it, and looking back on it, while I can definitely pitch it apart as a developer, there's still some fun redeeming qualities to it in the midst of the mess that it is. And one of those redeeming qualities is its soundtrack, uh, and but the soundtrack would not have been as diverse or creative as it was if the levels that were in the game were not diverse and creative. All right, no worries, uh, Jay. Hope you have a good drive. Yeah, as I was saying. So one of the things I liked about Sonic Heroes, which again, because there, it's kind of a it's, it's bad for some people, is its level design. So, Sonic Heroes levels are long. Like, really, really long. To the point where, like, speed runs might take anywhere from, uh, you know, from, like, five to ten minutes, depending on which, which stage it is. But, for people 
who enjoy like exploration or things like that they definitely had a lot to offer and i felt like a lot of the levels even the more janky ones made good use of game design principles and felt like the they followed the nice two-act stage formula if you will that the uh 2d sonic games followed so in that regard it definitely followed about that oh i'm talking about sonic heroes topper nicholson Basically, the Sonic game where there were 12 playable characters. Oh, actually, would it be faster if I go? No, no, this will be faster if I go this way. So this is still a bit of a walk over there. So while I'm ranting about uh, Sonic Heroes, we are going, we are making our way to uh, the Varus area. Have some sound effects. You wish they had to remake the Sonic Heroes? I think, or at least the make the Sonic game for older audiences. So, I mean, there is a game for that Copper Nicholson. It's called Sonic Frontiers, and it's amazing. In fact, Sonic Frontiers just had an update released that not only added Amy, Tails, and Knuckles as playable characters for the first time in over a decade. But it also added a challenge mode that added like an another six hours of content with like the hardest stages in the game on top of a boss rush and to if that wasn't enough the cherry on top is if you do all that you actually get to fight a way 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 better version of the final boss than what we got in the original so it is really cool from what I saw, but the thing is, like, we already did the Sonic, like, rain, you know, the Sonic Minimum Range Challenge run, but if there ever was, like, an interim where it was, like, we're waiting for the next challenge run, I might consider trying to do the, what, like, how how hard is it to be, the, you know, the, the, you know, the, um, I think it's called the Final Horizon <laughs> without collecting range, because those levels look brutal. I did the full game copper nickel sin for what was available at the time. This was an update that came over a year after its release. It only just recently released it like like a thing out of the past couple days or weeks. Alright. Now! Surprise! I was hoping to jump down and, and uh, damage it with the, the axe, but no. I ended up uh, uh, slightly misaligned that. But yeah, in terms of a remake for... Alright, here's a... So, here's what I'd say, Copper Nettleson. In terms of which 3D Sonic game deserves a remake, I think the best one to remake, honestly, would be Sonic Adventure 1. And there's a number of reasons for this. For one thing, Sonic Adventure 1, I think, was the best take of a 3D Sonic platformer. Even more than Sonic Adventure 2. And I know for some people that'll be like, how could you possibly say that, Thomas? Sonic Adventure 2 is like the best Sonic game ever. And so I just say, no, no, it's not. Like, it's, it's, it's a very, very, very good 3D Sonic game. But I think Sonic Adventure 1 has a bit more heart to it, personally. Not to mention, I really, really liked that in Sonic Adventure 1, even the, um... Like, even back then, what was still a very new concept, they still did a, a sort of open-world Sonic game. And I think Sonic Adventure 1 is the closest we have gotten to a good open-world Sonic game, at least until Sonic Frontiers came out, because Sonic Frontiers is amazing. But, like, I'm just, like, to me, the idea of, like, you know, Sonic Frontiers definitely embraced a lot of who those the main characters were with between Sonic, Amy, Tails, and Knuckles. Like, they did a great job doing justice for those characters. And Sonic Adventure explores a lot, of, like, all four of those characters in depth. So if they did, like, a remake using the, like, Frontier-style design philosophy, I think that'd be fantastic. Because you could definitely explore each of those characters in a deep, meaningful way. Like, Amy learning to be more independent, Tails learning to uh, basically be the hero himself, being able to stand up on his own two feet, and, and not just be always looking up to Sonic, but never quite reaching him. 
Knuckles learning more about his past. Like, there's a lot... There's a lot to sink your teeth into a Sonic Adventure. Not to mention, of course, we have Chaos, who is... You know, it's very interesting. And also E-102... Um, E-102 Gamma, which is, again, the, an amazing character. They gave us a very different perspective on, on the whole Eggman Empire. Oh, that needs adjusting. Okay. Okay, I think it needs to move down about two pixels. Let's set a bet. Topmost horizontal section. Move the top edge two pixels down. Your favorite part of Frontiers is all the lore and flavor tests that ties to the old media. Oh, I love that. I agree, Jay. That's an amazing part of Frontiers. And what's what I love about Frontiers, the way it ties its lore in, is it, it never feels like it's just like fan service lore ties in. Because it just feels like it's so organically put in there in ways that make sense to what's happening in the story. And I like that they basically, for a lot of the last decade, it feel it really feels like any quote unquote modern Sonic game. And when I say modern, I mean not I mean not 2D has been trying for whatever reason to try and distance itself from what came before it. And I just never understood that. Like, it felt like it was doing a disservice to, like, all the, you know, all the lore they had built up to that point from the adventure games and even from the Genesis era. So the fact that they pay an homage, not only an homage to it, but actually incorporate it in meaningful ways in Sound Frontiers, I thought was really, really cool. Okay, so I know if I talk too much about Sonic, I'm going to uh, get distracted and not. Okay, so this needs moved out one pixel, I think. It's probably going to be an all thing. One second. Uh, yes, Copper Nicholson. So. In, like, during Sonic Frontiers, they make reference to, I think, either all or most of the modern Sonic games. Like, I remember, like, even in Sonic Frontiers, there was a moment that was a clear callback to Sonic Heroes, where they're talking about the ends. And Eggman's like, alright, the end's coming, I'll just summon the Egg Flea and defeat them. And Sage is like, Eggman, don't do that, I already analyzed it, it won't work. Like, there's a 0% ch chance that'll work. At the Ed Flea is a Sonic Heroes thing, so... That was definitely a callback. In fact, I remember Sage also mentioning, like, one of the re ways she's able to convince Robotnik to join up with Sonic and say, I mean, you guys work together to defeat the Metal Overlord, so why can't you do that again? Because, again, yeah, Metal Overlord is a Sonic Heroes thing. Okay, so I think the right side's good, possibly. I think the right side's probably good. Yep, yeah, okay. So right side, this edge is good, but the left side needs um. Left edge of top vertical section. Move the left edge. Are you telling me there's gonna be a Paw Patrol horror movie, Topper Nicholson? <laughs> what would that even look like? My brain has a hard time trying to contemplate that. Saw Patrol.
Uh, and never. Am I familiar with Jigsaw? You mean Jigsaw Puzzles? I didn't play a bunch of Jigsaw Puzzles before. Okay, that needs adjustment. I think I'll just end up being all platforms. Oh, no, I am not Chopper Nicholson. So, and I'm not really too keen on talking about stuff like that, so why don't we again change the subject back to Sonic? So thinking about, uh, like, if uh, I could uh, request any one 3D Sonic game to be remade, it would definitely be uh, Sonic Adventure for those reasons for how it ties into those lore. Although, there is a part of me that would love to see a remake of Sonic Heroes for the sole reason that if they're trying to reintroduce, like, the main, we'll say the main supporting cast of Sonic, to the modern audience, if you will, the gen, uh, the generation three Sonic game audience, if you will, Sonic Heroes is definitely the one game that had the most of that supporting cast play a role in some meaningful way. So, yeah, it's a little, little real regions. Ah, I see Cap Randallson. So is this gonna be end up being like sort of like a, a Doom Eternal and Animal Crossing New Horizon situation where it's like you have two asynchronous communities that end up uh, joining forces, so to speak, to be like, hey, we we support your community, we support your community, yay! <laughs> so like you have like Isabel help doing all the stuff in Doom, fighting demons, and the Doom guy coming over to the islands to go fishing and build little houses and things like that. <laughs> Like I always, I always found those um, those Animal Crossing Doom memes very, very funny, but also very wholesome. But yeah, I could definitely see an argument for Sonic Heroes remake. Hate for the again to reintroduce a lot of the, the supporting cast. So like, as an example, chat, we have not had a main line Sonic game with Cream the Rabbit. And I think over a decade, and to me, that is just, um, as uh, Ferris would say, inconceivable. <laughs> because, because just as Sonic has tails, as as sort of like a, a younger brother kind of sidekick, Amy has Cream, and Cream is, and Cream is like some, uh, always ha is always working with the Chow. So I feel like she would fit in pretty naturally with the this lore that we got about the Coco in Sonic Frontiers. Um, it'd also be cool to see the Team Chaotix come back. You know, the Chaos Detective Agency and maybe having them investigate things. Okay, that needs to have really yeah okay i need to just okay so chat i've been i do need to check that and then we'll uh make our adjustments so I'm trying to think so sonic heroes what else is there oh yeah uh, how can we forget you know team dark like team dark's also very important we haven't seen Rouge the Bat in a while. We haven't, well, I mean, we've seen Rouge the Bat in various forms of Mia, but not like in a meaningful way in the mainland Sonic games. Similarly, you know, it's been, you know, I mean, while Shadow's been brought up here and there, that's not there. And I mean, Omega, my goodness, it's been a while since we've seen Omega. Okay, so I think this one needs adjusting. That needs four pixels to the right. Okay. Well, 
Well, when I see that Kyle Russell, I mean in the games, like in the mainline Sonic games. I'm not talking about like comets or anything like that, Kyle Nicholson. I mean in the mainline Sonic games. It's been a while since we've had Omega. So. All those characters combined with Metal Sonic, adding in Sonic Heroes would be, be great. Especially, I think what would be cool is if they made Sonic Heroes reach its full potential. Because the original Sonic Heroes had like this, you know, the various team formations that were very gimmicky and kind of removed a lot of the variety uh, that the character play styles brought from the adventure games. Especially like the flying style. It feels like, you know, forcing, like, Tails, for example, to have basically have to carry Sonic and Knuckles in a tower formation just really, really slows him down in a way that just doesn't make sense for the way he plays. Or at least the way he played in Sonic Adventure 1. So, what I would like to see, I want to see, like, a Sonic Heroes remake with the Frontier-style level design and the Frontier-style of like exploration movement mechanics things like that now would that be difficult to balance yes it would that's why it would have to be uh you'd basically have to convert everything to a more open zone format to make it even remotely viable but i think that would definitely be the way to go because it'd be a great way to reintroduce a lot of the the, the rest of the supporting cast and also like, you know, I mean, Sonic Fr Frontiers by the very end gave us four playable characters. You know, imagine having, like, a Sonic Heroes remake where you have, like, 12. <laughs> that would be so, so cool. <laughs> I'm just imagining, like, how would they, like, what intricacies and differences would they give to the other, like, major characters like Rouge, Omega, Shadow, Cha the Chaotix, Cream the Rabbit, and even making Big the Cat playable again. See my chat. Are we not going to address the fact that for whatever reason in Sonic Frontiers, Babe the Cat is the only other uh, character from the previous Sonic games that isn't like turned into like cyber or space stuff? <laughs> I mean, that, yeah, Babe the Cat's always kind of like been in the background of Sonic Adventure 2, so there was an argument to be made that, that he might have transcended reality somehow. Wait, what am I doing? So we don't want to add new regions, we need to adjust regions. Okay. So basically, any horizontal section... We did, you know, we all, overall did not too bad for our first try at it. We just have a couple of adjustments to make. First things first. Yeah, so basically, first we're going to essentially stem through our various coded regions and look for any region that has a left edge like this. So these left edges need to be moved out by one pixel. Fairly minor adjustment. Beta is the Buddha. I mean, he's always fairly peaceful and meditating on things because of fishing. He's always trying to find. <laughs> he's always trying to find Froggy. But what is Froggy? Is Froggy truly a pet or is Froggy a concept? Is Froggy like this idea of being at peace and content? And when Froggy runs away in Sonic Adventure 1, it is to represent chaos 
and that contentness being lost as one must go on a spiritual journey to reunite with that sense of enlightenment. And my goodness, somehow this makes the makes the worst part of Sonic Adventure actually seem more, at least mildly tolerable. Oh my goodness, what have we done, chat? What have we done? Sonic, if you want to, if you want to defeat the end, you'll need to find your, find your, find your inner, her person, and body. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> On that note. as I continue to make my adjustments. All right, so I think that edge was fine, but it was the other edge. And he's moved down by two pixels. Right. Oh wait, was that the top edge? That was not the top edge. I am silly. I am silly. That was the outer edge. Top edge is that. There we go. All right. So we have made some adjustments. Now we just need to do the move these adjustments for the down here. Anyway. So, Copper Nicholson, have you ever played Sonic Adventure 1? Just out of curiosity. Here, Scott Rantelson, have you ever played Sonic Adventure 1? Alright, time to do some more testing. So let's make our way back over. So I carefully make my way back and wait for our stamina to recharge. So hop. Actually, there's uh, multiple games with a Chow Nursery Copper Nicholson. So both Sonic Adventure One and Sonic Adventure Two have a Chow uh, have a Chow Garden, as it's called. Oh yeah, the Chow Garden is uh, very very fun. But that's beside the point. My question is: Have you played Sonic Adventure One and particularly Bait Story? Because because Bait Story and Sonic Adventure One was easily the weakest part of the game. It was basically just. We want to make a fishing game, so here we are.
I definitely liked it, how they handled uh, Bait and Fishing and Sonic Frontiers a lot better, because it felt like it was a it was a nice relaxing mini game that also, that fit with the idea of the game and provided about useful rewards. Yeah, Scott Nicholson. That's not Adventure One. All right, so then then I imagine you have seen the silliness that is a uh, big the cat story is on Adventure One. It's like so much fishing. All right, that looks good. Excellent needs adjustment. Did I move that down? Uh, yeah, I did. Okay, so how much does it need move? Okay, I think it needs to be moved down one pencil. Everything else seems to be... Well, almost everything else, they'll also have to check that other one section. So, fishing for a fish, Copper Nettleson. You know, in, a, in like a lake or an ocean. Sonic Prime? Great question, Jake. I think I saw the first season of Sonic Prime, and I think that's about it. Have you seen it, Jake? Hmm. Okay, I think my over time There's only like two episodes last year better than I thought it would be. Alright. Well, glad you're enjoying it, Jay. I mean, for me, after watching the first season, I was just kind of like... Okay. <laughs> like, you know, it's it just kind of, to me, felt like a... But then it just felt like a... You know, it's... How, how do I describe it? It's a self-contained multiverse story. And that's kind of all it is. Like, I didn't really find myself getting that attached with any of the characters or things 
or why well, dang it, I like the parallel universe characters and things like that. Fan fiction. Okay, yeah, that's definitely one way to put it. It's a fan fiction. <laughs> Whereas like when we're playing like the main the main games and we're diving into like all this cool lore with like the ancients and the chaos and the end, like to me that's a lot more fascinating. Okay, so the thing I need to adjust is this line. No. This line. And this line. Anybody asking why am I defeating these Cabrals here? More so just for convenience so we don't hear them every time we go for testing purposes. Might as well defeat these uh, rattlesnakes as well. for some testing purposes. Man. Also, chat, you know, the more I'm wandering through the, the, this dungeon, the more I can't help but reminisce over how, like, you know, these rooms here, like the room over here, at one point or another, like, all these rooms were just, like, tile-mapped numbers of, like, various platforms with heights and configurations of enemies. And now we're going to see them all strung together in meaningful, in like a meaningfully interconnected Metroidvania dungeon with artwork and lore. It feels good. There we go. Feels good. I think that's I, I say I'm technically walking on the I just move one pixel to the right and that'll be it. So no not that one. This no. This All right, I think, knock on wood, this will be uh, the last of our tests for wood. At least on this floor.
so while I'm making my way back there, I think what we'll do next chat um, is I'll program the regions for the areas that will be dirt, and I'll use the wooden sound effect just as a placeholder for testing purposes. And then probably off stream, I'll, I'll, have to, I'll either find or make a sound effect to be footsteps on a bit on slight dirt or sand or things like that. And then just, you know, bring that sound effect into Fusion so that's, you know, basically the reaches are all programmed, it just needs the sound effect. And that'll be all good. So. Notice at that point, the player will be like at the very edge of the, of the wooden area. Okay, I think that's a dead chat. What do you, yeah, because it's, it's enough on it that you might be able to hear it. As I say, that'll do. So I'm going to take uh, another quick break chat and when we come back we'll be programming the regions for the uh, dirt areas. So, don't go anywhere, guys. I will be right back.
Alrighty chat, welcome back everyone. So this next section should be a bit shorter. Because essentially what we're doing is we're defining a new uh, walking sound effect region, but the code for it is effectively just going to play the same wood sound effect until we actually create a sound effect that represents uh, walking on dirt. So grab that. We'll say man. Must be equal to three. go from there so basically this will be we'll be programming the regions using wood the wood walking sound effect as a placeholder until i can get a different sound effect for it in the meantime do some copy pasta if we we'll use this is our copy pasta so i think we only need four regions so Lots of deletions going on. So much delete. I feel like you're Brock when it comes to Saw characters. But Copper Nicholson, do you have the drying pan? Like, it's kind of impossible to be Brock without, like, the drying pan, right? After all, what are you going to do when it rains at Sonic Frontiers? Alright, good, you have the drive van. Alright, then you're already one step ahead. Actually, speaking of Pokemon though, I I've 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 been watching a, a, a good amount of the new Pokemon anime. It's actually you know, I'm being honest, I, I actually really am enjoying it. <laughs> like, it's been... Like, I haven't felt, like, as interested in seeing what happens next in a Pokemon anime since the XY series. And I think that's really saying something. Oh, yeah. The Pokemon Horizons, I think is what it's called. They... No, Pokemon Horizons. It's still ongoing, Dr. Nicholson. It, it has a new protagonist. Well, yes, Ash Fist is Jerry Copper Nicholson, but there's a new protagonist in there. In the current Pokemon anime. It, I'll say this. It's very different. But I, I think it's a good different. So. Let's see here. If it's 33. That's going to be. It's probably up here somewhere. Yep, there it is. Okay. All right, chat. So. Uh, please explain the difference. Well, obviously we have a new protagonist in, uh, in the form of Leko, uh, or L Liko, I think might be her name. And what's interesting about Liko, I mean, besides she's starting her journey, so obviously she has a lot more room for growth than, the, than Ash does, just because Ash, you know, has, has basically ended his journey at this point. Uh, what's, what's fascinating about Liko versus Ash is Ash was a very extroverted character. Nothing wrong with that. Whereas Liko is a very introverted character, and like, it, it's like such a... So, you have a character who's much less outwardly expressive and good at communicating as, as Ash is, but, all, but at the same time much more introspective and uh, empathetic than perhaps Ash was. So, it, it's a, Liko's a very different character than Ash in that regard. But I think it's a, a good kind of different because Liko's story is very much about her not only gaining more confidence in herself, but also trying to under uh, trying to find what she wants to do in life, and as well as trying to understand others around her and make friends. Because you know, being an introvert my, myself, it like I I found that quite relatable. Not to mention, they actually have a nice supporting cast of uh, 
of uh, crew members. There's all with, uh, they all have their own varying experiences, and it's really cool. Like, it, it, it's like, I, if you haven't seen it right, Hal Brandelson, I'd highly recommend at least watching the first couple of episodes and see if it's something that interests you, because I, I do, I do genuinely, have been genuinely enjoying the Pokemon anime, or at least the current one. All right. So what I'm going to do now, chat, is just for testing purposes. Let's see how this area holds up. That is the metal sound test. inverted minor adjustments. Maybe if that was there, it'd be good. Alrighty. Now we got that region all locked in though. Let's adjust this one. According to the tile editor, that will be a couple of areas down. We're running up here, so one, two, three, four, five. So about 90 pixels down. One, two, three, four.
Okay, now let's test this area. Well, why don't you watch the chopper? Uh, why don't you watch the anime chopper Nicholson? Then you just decide that for yourself. Just saying. Okay, so I think we need to move these a bit further down. Try there. Okay, I think we got the, these regions dialed in. At least reasonably so. Let's take on a look over here. Oh. So we got those regions dialed in. Next area it's dialed in is actually up here. And over there. Right. Let's move this over. Let's take a little one. Okay. This over to the left.
Okay. Now to add these down here. Alright chat, time to test out these regions. So good. So chat, we actually need to get up here, which requires a little bit of traversal. Slowly make our way through here. Excellent. All right, I think this spot's good. That's a trust test over there. about that. We will test this area, chat.
Alright, that edge seems good. Let's try the left edge. Alrighty. Well, chat. I think we got the... I think we got the region styled in. So that's good. So all that's left to do is actually just change out the sound effects. That's something I can work on off stream. that hold that all right well chat i actually think you know i think this is all to be a good spot to wrap up so i know it was, was a little bit but we managed to actually get this entire uh, map so this huge area way down here every single area that would have a different footstep sound fats the region at least has been mapped so that right there is good progress. I can work on a sound effects add-in in off stream for the for what would be like footsteps on dirt, but beyond that, that's you know, I'd say the sound design for the demo is at least for what I'd be willing to show on stream is all good to go. Now there is another um, section that I'll be doing some sound stuff, uh, sound effects uh, stuff like this for as well, but that's I will be doing off stream. So I think this will be a good spot to wrap things up. So, if you're watching on Twitch, feel free to stick around for a raid. But if you're watching on YouTube and you like what you saw, please consider subscribing on YouTube. It's free to subscribe on YouTube. You can always change your mind later, and it's a great way to show support. If you're watching on YouTube, I hope you have an amazing night.